Okay, I guess we're gonna listen to Gilded Runner from the Genshin Impact soundtrack. So, for those of you who may be new to the channel, I'm a drummer. Also happen to love Genshin Impact. We've been doing this little series where we're breaking down different songs from the Genshin Impact soundtrack from a drummer's point of view. Now this one's going to be a little bit different, previously we've done a couple of big boss battle themes, but Gilded Runner is really just a basic overworld battle theme. But there's something really special about this song. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on it right now, we'll talk more about it at the end of the video after we actually listen to the song. But long story short, the core of the composition of this song is built on the Fibonacci sequence. Now if you're like me and you didn't know anything about the Fibonacci sequence prior to looking into this song from Genshin, it is effectively a mathematical sequence that can be found in various areas throughout nature. There are some juicy little details as far as the origin of the Fibonacci sequence and how it ties into the theme of nature that we'll talk more about at the end of the video, but for now let's go ahead and listen to the song. If you liked the video, thumbs up gang. Where you at? Subscribe for more. We do stream right here on YouTube. Come hang out in the stream sometime. Okay, this is an official upload from Hoyo Mix, so this should be very high audio quality. That's it right there, that done. Oh man. That those little duns, that's the hang on, man. I, w I was gonna wait till the end of the video. That's the Fibonacci sequence. And I we've got there's a video from like the, the live stream. I think it might have been the the whole Genshin 3.0 live stream where they talk about how they use this. And I think they give a little graph. I got to find that video so we can look at this before we listen to the song any further. It's going to make so much more sense if you guys see it too. Okay, I think this is the clip from the live stream where they talk about using that sequence and how it ties into the song. We're going to check this out really, really quick. Built upon how Mondstadt's battle themes had variations. One of those pieces I experimented with the Fibonacci sequence. You can hear the song in the background. There, right there, right there, right there. So they're, they're going to count this out basically using a metronome, and every, every little click is what they end up tying into being part of the melody using this sequence. It starts very slow. I'm going to start the song over when we go back through. You're going to hear it starts very slow, and then it gradually picks up. Basically, you follow this sequence of numbers, and every time it goes in, they tie it into the overall composition of the song and they land the hits as the numbers increase. So it gradually sounds like there's a major buildup in the song. Super duper cool. <laughs> the cat. <laughs> Who edited that in? I love seeing this graphic. It's gonna make listening to the song make more sense. As much sense as it can, I guess. You can hear everything coming in right there and following that. Let's go back to the actual song and listen to it from the start. Okay, let's go back and listen to this song from the start. That pattern is super hard to predict. Uh, as you can tell from like when I first started listening to it, I was trying to get that, that, nope, totally off. This is not my thing. The math behind this and memorizing the pattern, not my thing at all. So let's see if you do a better job keeping up with it than I can. Those pauses, dude, every time I think it's going to do something, it creates so much tension, especially right here as it's building in. Swirling up, and it gets bigger here. Boom. Here, bassy sounds from the strings there. And that time, they held the note. It, it's still just a, it's still just the single note from within the sequence, but they held it, which is so damn cool because that's just like it's just taking the sequence and further bleeding into the idea of making it art. Really cool. Again, they're holding the note. Got to pause it again. So if you remember whenever it was showing that like that metronome counter going down and there were those long gaps, that's where they're holding those notes to fill those gaps that there's still music and there's still the feel there. The song still keeps going rather than just stopping abruptly. It's super cool. I 
I cannot keep up. You can hear there's more instruments coming in with each hit in the sequence as well as that main medley overhead. Or melody, not medley. You know what I mean. And here they've actually got percussion in there. The little thing, I think that's probably a xylophone. Just a li little bit of like a standard per percussion right there as opposed to just the strings or the horns. Oh, oh, okay. So on that, I think it's a xylophone. Correct me if I'm wrong. They are actually playing their own pattern, but accentuating each hit within the sequence. Let me roll it back a couple of seconds and see if you guys can hear that as well. It's very subtle because they're accenting the sequence. That's already in your head from listening to the song prior, but they're actually playing their own pattern on the xylophone and just accentuating each hit there. I'm going to go back, see if you guys can pick that up. Goes quiet. They're basically playing a eighth note pattern and then accentuating every hit of the sequence. That is so smart. Again, they're just taking a super cool idea and making art out of math, which phew, who would have thought? Fact math. And then everything's in there and they have so much hitting on each hit of the sequence there. Horns, strings, timpanies. And you've actually still got that xylophone in the background. It's so subtle. Again, oh my God, holding those notes and then writing up on it. Listen to it again. Oh, and again. Woo! And here they've got they've got um it sounds like horns are holding some of those notes while everything else is hitting the rest of the notes throughout the hold on the first note. Listen to it again. My there's so many layers. Oh, that is cool. And it's just this build up through the whole song following that sequence. They start by just hitting the notes, then they have more stuff. Woo! More instruments have been added. They start just hitting the notes, then more stuff hits the notes, then they hold the notes. Then they hold the notes as other instruments hit more of the notes. Oh my gosh. And still, I think the only like, the only traditional percussion we have here is that xylophone way in the background but the sequence itself is what's driving the rhythm of this song that is the rhythm we have a guitar eighth notes again similar to what the xylophone was doing that's the percussion right now is that guitar just muting those eighth notes din 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 I don't think I've ever heard this part of this song. There's the sequence again, building it in with the sequence. Woo! Whoa! Oh, they, they took a hit on the sequence and da -da -da! They, they made a fill on drums. That would be like a drum fill. Obviously, they're not using drums there, but it's still effectively, you know, they, they stylized the hit. It's still the one hit. But they did like a like a triplet over that one hit. Oh, listen for that. Listen for that. I think that was horns that hit that. that da -da -dun. Did you hear that? Woo! I bet they do it again. Yeah. Yeah, they did it again. Again, just finding ways to use the same sequence in the same pattern, but make it artistic through music. It's incredible. The symbol clashes. Damn. The 
those symbol clashes, let's go back. I think those were bouncing between the sequence, like actually hitting on the sequence and in between the sequence to try and maintain similar to the xylophone hitting those eighth notes, the guitar hitting the eighth notes. I think that the symbol crashes, you know, the, the hand symbols, I think those were on the sequence as well as in between it to try and maintain a steady count. Usually what you do in those instances, they're trying to create a sense of comfort when they have something very uncomfortable like this seemingly random sequence. It sounds random to 99% of the people that hear it, including myself the first time that I heard it prior to learning about the sequence within it. And then they, they try and add some consistency in there just for some, it, it's like the glue of the song basically. And I think that's what the symbols were doing. I want to hear it one more time because I may, I might be wrong. They may have just been on the sequence. Oh! I don't know what those symbols are doing. I actually have no clue what those symbols are doing right there. Because they were hitting on the sequence at some points. And other points they were not, but it wasn't a consistent beat. It almost sounded like they started a second sequence. We, we got to hear it one more time. It almost sounds like they started a second sequence for just those cymbal crashes. A hundred percent. And then the double hit and it ramps up. And then it tied in with the rest of the music at the very end. I I think I'm 90% confident when I say they just started a second sequence for those symbols before tying it all together at the very end for that big outro. Holy. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. A lot of that was going over my head. Obviously, we had to stop and go back and chop it up a lot to try and try and make this make sense because again, the sequence is it's fairly complicated and I'm definitely not a math whiz. So I'm not sitting there like counting it out in my head and like doing the math to know what comes next. No freaking way. That is not my jam. But the way that they use that, it was just so cool. I pointed out several times where they took hits on the sequence and they would hold them. And then the part where they were holding with some instruments while the rest of the instruments continued with each individual hit of the sequence. That was so cool, man. That got me messed up. And then the thing at the end with the symbols, I don't know what that was. I'm not like if someone here knows the sequence and like could do the math or like listen to it and go back and figure it out. It sounded like they just put it on a separate sequence still on beat. And then it came together with everything else at the end. That's what it sounded like to me. I may be wrong. I'm really not confident in that. Honestly, the more I think about it, the less confident I am. So all conversation about the sequence in the song, like the actual math and the hits aside, let's talk about it from a more poetic and artistic point of view, because using this sequence for this song in this part of Genshin Impact was not coincidence. In fact, it is an extremely thoughtful and deliberate decision. I'm reading right here ancient Sanskrit texts that use the Hindu Arabic numerical system. First mention it in 200 BC. That's old as hell. And so right off the rip right there, we've got the ties between the Middle East, both between the origins of the Fibonacci sequence and the themes of Sumeru as a whole. And beyond that, the Fibonacci sequence is obviously it's a mathematical sequence. It's considered very scholarly, and you probably recognize the term scholar, very familiar theme within the Sumeru storyline. Because, you know, effectively, the entirety of the Sumeru Archon quest involves around the academia and the scholars. And beyond the ties to scholars and the Middle East, it also ties into nature. I mentioned this at the start of the video. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now. So the Fibonacci sequence can be found in bunches of different aspects of nature. A very common example is the spiral within seashells and conchs. And then actually something that really blew my mind is that the sequence of numbers, just looking at the numbers themselves, is almost always used in flower petals. Virtually every single flower has petals equal to a number within the sequence, and they follow that sequence. So usually a flower you see, it's gonna have three, five, eight, 13 or 21 petals on it. And that is the exact pattern of the Fibonacci sequence. What's a major overarching theme for Sumeru? Academia, Middle East and nature. And so taking such a nature heavy and nature dependent section 
of the overarching Genshin Impact lore and even the map of Tevat and using this pattern and this sequence within the theme for those fights is so damn thoughtful. Technical complexity aside, just from the, an artistic standpoint, it makes me appreciate all the thought and all the effort that had to have gone into the song even more than I did before. Because on a first listen, it's a cool song. It's really epic. There's a lot of buildup. There's a lot of drive. The pattern feels random if you don't know or realize that it's an actual mathematical sequence happening. And that just adds a ton of tension and drama to a song that's used as the theme for random overworld fights. It's just kind of crazy how everything about it makes perfect sense. I'm blown away after looking into the sequence more and learning more about it and then putting together the pieces on how it ties into this song for Genshin in Sumeru. I hope that you guys are as impressed by it as I am. Now, if you like the video, of course, leave a thumbs up on it. Subscribe for more. I mentioned earlier we do stream here on YouTube. Genshin Impact, Honkai Impact, Honkai Star Rail coming up real soon. I'd love to see you guys there. Turn on notifications. And in the meantime, love the games, love yourself, and I love you. Bye.